Buongiorno from Cinque Terre, Italy. These are five sleepy fishing villages located on the Italian Riviera in the north of the country. And this is arguably one of the most picturesque places in all of Italy. But there are millions of tourists who travel here every year. So does that mean that it is still worth the hype? Well, I am glad you asked because I will be answering that question in this video as well as letting you know everything you need to know before traveling here for yourself. I have been here about three times now, so I can understand how confusing it is to get around, but no need to fear, Lexi Limitless is here. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I won't do that again. Let's go. All right, we just met our new friend Nico here, Hi. who's gonna be taking us on his boat over to Monterosso from Vernaza. And this is actually only 40 euros for about 20, 30 minute boat ride. So it's a great deal and it's also a perfect way to see the coastline. Of course, everywhere in Cinque Terre, one of the biggest downsides of traveling here is that there are tons of tourists, millions every year to be exact. And as you can see behind me, there is a huge line of tourists who are getting on a pretty gigantic boat right now. And as you just saw previously, we were able to get a private boat for only $20 US. So it is possible to uh, travel to these really popular destinations and still have a unique solo experience to yourself. You can opt out of these mass tourist transportation uh, options if you want to. You just have to know where to look and how to ask. This is Monterosso. It is the largest and farthest north of all of the different villages. It is also split into two different sections. I'm walking down one of the streets in the old town right now, and there is also a more resort style beachfront section. It even has like a proper promenade, and it's the only beach in all of Cinque Terre. I would say that this one is the most accessible out of all of the terraces because there are easy trains that come from different areas of Italy. It also has the most hotels as well, which also means that it gets really busy here and it also has uh, the biggest price tag. If you wanna have this place to yourself, you gotta come in either May or September. I'm here in May right now in Monterosso. This is the only terrace with a real beach. So this is obviously one of the most popular beaches in this area. And as you can see, there are basically no other people around. So it is very important to travel during those shoulder seasons. It does get a bit dead and a lot of the businesses are closed in the winter time, but it is hot and packed with thousands upon thousands of tourists in each of the terraces during the summer. So take it from me, this is the best time to come. We're standing at the main promenade in Monterosso, and if you're planning a trip here, I would recommend having at least three or four days if you wanna see everything, get lost on the cobblestone streets, even have a few different half day hiking trips as well as a boat cruise. When it comes to getting around in Cinque Terre, here is what you need to know. So basically the easiest way to get from village to village is by train. It only costs five euros per adult per village. So it does kind of add up over time, but it's definitely worth it. And as you saw earlier, you can also take a water taxi from village to village. And then there is also my favorite option, which is hiking. Unfortunately, there is a section of the trail that is closed, so you can't hike from uh, the first village all the way down to Rio Maggiore, but you can definitely hike for many hours. You can get even a few day trips out of it. And before you go on that hike, you have to get a Cinque Terre card which I will link the information to pick up one of those in the description it's pretty easy you can get them both at the trailhead and at any of the tourist information centers 
I have not been back to Manarola in six years and I would say I'm actually really surprised that this has been like the most crowded of all of the villages we've visited today. So maybe people are catching on that this place is also beautiful. Both Fernaza and Manarola are the smallest of the villages. Manarola is arguably one of the most beautiful. It also has the best place to see the sunset. But keep in mind that with both Fernaza and Manarola, if you want to be staying in these villages, there are no hotels. So you're looking at guest houses and Airbnbs. And last but not least, we have arrived in the final terrace, Rio Maggiore. And this place has such a special place in my heart because the first time I was here was in 2016. I was backpacking and randomly at night, the trains went on strike and my friends and I were stuck until we ended up coming here late at night and our Airbnb had completely abandoned us at that point. And there was no hotels that were available to stay in. And thankfully a couple of very friendly souls overheard our issue of not having a place to stay and let us all sleep on their couch and I'm so grateful for that because otherwise we would have ended up having to just sleep on the street here but I absolutely love this place because it has the best nightlife and I would say it's also the most adventurous of the five terraces because this is where you can find things like sailing snorkeling diving kayaking and everything like that so if you're in the mood for doing all of those type of things this is definitely the place for a day trip or to spend a few nights and now the moment you have all been waiting for is Cinque Terre actually worth the hype drum roll please yes of course it's so worth it to travel here this is one of the most beautiful places on the entire planet but as with anywhere else that is really popular it's very important to do it right you absolutely don't want to just come here during peak season the heat of summer with thousands upon thousands of other tourists then book big group tours that you're kind of bogged down all day and you don't have the opportunity to explore on your own another thing that i absolutely love here is that there are no cars which means that everyone is just on the train you don't usually have to wait in line for any kind of public transportation and also because there are no cars you don't have to stress about finding parking or anything like that the key is to always show up early in the morning if you want to have places to yourself and also travel during the shoulder seasons thank you guys so much for watching this video if you want to see more like this don't forget to subscribe and i also have a weekly travel news newsletter that has all of the fun bucket list destinations, travel hacks, and everything that I learned from traveling to every country. So don't forget to check that out. The link is in the description or you can sign up at LexiLimitless.com newsletter. And until next time, let's push our limits.